All right, Lloyd Vance does a great job, uh, Pro Football Writer Association of America, and, of course, contributor NFL Network, kind enough to join us in his weekly spot right here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. What's going on, pal? Hey, Q, how you doing, man? I'm it's doing a, well. It's a numbers crunch. It, it is a numbers crunch. I'm doing well. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I misspeak sometimes or I misspoke, Lloyd. I, I, I just get the sense I still have not – I'm still – I'm, it's not that I'm flip flopping. I'm just not. I don't really have a feel for this game just yet. But I think when we have spoken, I think we've been very fair when you're talking about both these teams respectively. And I'm just wondering, do you have a feel yet for this game? Well, I, I, I'm starting to get a, a feel for it. But as you were saying earlier, it, it's a situation where both these teams are playing at a very high level. Don't forget. You haven't had a lot of matchups in a Super Bowl where it's number one versus number one. And both these teams are up there in terms of points scored and points allowed. So, you know, they're pretty close. Um, but then when you start looking at history and, and all the other things around it, obviously the Patriots have had a longer history in the Super Bowl. So I, I don't think you're being more harsh to the Eagles, unfortunately. Uh, we're in Eagles territory, and there, sometimes some people are going to take it a little personal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true, but you know what? you got to deal with it. Um, it is what it is. You know, the one thing I mention is when you look at the head coaching and you look at Belichick, and we know his pedigree and resume, but then you look at the job that D- uh, Doug Peterson has done this uh, year, uh, and he's done a great job. I mean, he's got these guys buying in, but I think when you look at the X's and O's and the play calling, this is where I think – they're playing with a little bit of house money because now Doug can be a little more creative. He can throw a couple wrinkles that maybe the Patriots haven't seen, right? When we think they're going to go aggressive against Atlanta, what does he do? He goes conservative and they expose soft coverage. When we think he should go conservative against Minnesota, what does he do? He opens it up and he lets the quarterback throw the football down the field. So, I, I listen, I give him a ton of credit. I think he's done a hell of a job this year. Yeah, and I think that I really like with Doug Peterson – that he's done, that his mentor, Andy Reid, doesn't do a lot. He does adjustments. And whether it's in-game or during the week, he can change kind of on the fly, particularly at halftime, take a look at what the other team has been doing well against them and kind of take away their strengths, their weaknesses. And as you were saying, you know, if, if running the ball is not there, he can throw it. But he is going to lean on running the ball first and foremost. And, and obviously with Nick Foles being back there instead of Carson Wentz, He's going to try to establish that running game first, and, and uh, I think that'll help them because in looking at past uh, losses by the Patriots in the Super Bowl and during the season, it's always been time of possession that killed them. The, the, we go back to Week 15 uh, where the Patriots went down to Miami. Miami held that ball for 36 minutes in that game and kept Tom Brady on the bench. So these are the types of things that the Eagles are going to have to do in the Super Bowl. When you look at the offensive line of the Eagles and then you look at the matchup against uh, the Patriots defense, I mean, I think it's been well documented. We, we've talked in nauseam how well this Eagles defense has played. They can get to the quarterback. They can knock him off his spots. When you look at the offensive line right now and you have a guy in Vitae where, you know, at times he holds his own and then a couple times he's a little shaky, do you think that'll be an area where the Patriots will try to exploit, especially with a veteran guy like Harrison? No doubt about it. And they're going to try with Trey Flowers as well, another guy who can rush the pass with that team. Uh, and Harrison, they're going to try to get around the edge on by guy. But the thing is, Belichick is not stuck on blitzing. He's going to find the weakness, probably rushing four, and then working coverage behind that because they have a pretty good secondary behind him. So uh, by guy has done a very nice job recently, but I, I don't know if leaving him out there all by himself is, is the right way to go, uh, particularly – the schemes, the twists, the stunts that they could run are the Patriots. I, I know they're looking at opportunities against him. And, you know, I know in the past, Kelsey has had some trouble up the middle. Uh, he's been pretty stout this season. So uh, maybe they, they, they're concentrate more on the outside sliding protection, maybe get some chips there to help them. But by tie, by no means, is a guy you feel real secure about unless you're a really diehard Eagles fan. You know, we're talking about uh, all week long, the last several weeks, and really for the most part of the season. When you look at the Eagles and how well that defense is played, you got the Pro Bowl selection of Fletcher Cox. Uh, you've got a uh, really underrated player like Graham. You got uh, Jernigan, the veteran, Vinnie Curry. You got Chris Long coming in, making plays, especially on um, third down. The first rounder, Derek Barnett. They can rotate guys in and out. Their front four generated 33 of the team's 38 regular season sacks. But 
you know, do you think the Patriots knowing this and maybe they have Gronk chip a little bit here and there to to negate that pass rush do you think they'll find a way to get some mismatches against the Eagles linebackers because the Eagles defense they don't need linebackers to apply pressure they just need these guys basically you know uh, uh sideline to sideline against the run and then in coverage yeah and in, in the games where the Patriots succeeded particularly against uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers late in the season as well as that comeback against Jacksonville Brady was getting that ball out of his hand and and I know every defense wants to affect this timing. Uh, we go back to the Super Bowl win by the Giants in 07. They had five sacks, 16 hits on Brady, and that was the key to the game. So that's what the Eagles are going to try to do. Nate Solder and Fleming, the other tackle, uh, do a very good job of securing the edge. They're workmen like that guy. So they're going, to, they're going to get on their block. They're going to try to stick with it. Obviously, they have had some problems in the past with some speed guys, but they always seem to get just enough time for Brady to get that ball out of his hand. Uh, the Eagles actually have less sacks during the season than the Patriots. The Patriots have 53 this season, and they brought more pressure. But the Eagles are going to have to do more than knockdowns because Brady, if he has time to get a completion, he will. And he's going to get that ball out, as you were mm-hmm. saying, kind of to James White, Deion Lewis. Don't forget about Rex Burkhead and Amadolo on these short passing routes. And, and of course, Gronk. Uh, that's a matchup where the Eagles really have to think are a disadvantage because um, I, I don't like Michael Kentridge covering a tight end. Maybe they'll slide uh, Malcolm Jenkins over yep. there to help him in some way. So uh, th- that's definitely something that they're going to have to work, and I'm sure they're looking at. Uh, it's almost pick your poison because if you slide a linebacker on him, listen, he's too just he's going to blow by him. And if you try to slide a safety on him, even Jenkins, who's had a heck of a season and has really has really been a solid pro um, since coming over from New Orleans. You know, you've got now, you still have a mismatch because he's stronger. And then, you know, I don't hear a lot of people mentioning Patrick Robinson against Cooks as well. You know, Robinson is a guy that 29, 30-year-old vet didn't have a standout career, but has played exceptionally well this year for the Eagles. Yeah, that that um, move, the uh, acquisition of Cooks uh, for the New England Patriots, and you've got a burner there. So you, you, if it's not Gronk, if it's not Amendola, I mean, they, they can kill you in a variety of ways here. They can, and they have a lot of they have a, we- a lot of weapons. Chris Hogan is back now; seems to be healthy. And you know, th- th- this is a game where the Eagles got to bring the right game plan for the moment. So you talk about Week 14, going back to that, where the Patriots struggle struggle with the Dolphins. In that game, the Patriots were 0 and 11 on third down, and that was key. If the Eagles can get them in those obvious passing situations and get off the field uh, behind their pressure, that's going to help them out. And let's not forget also in that game, there was the turnover battle that the Patriots lost, which usually doesn't happen. Uh, Xavier Howard for the Dolphins had two picks of Brady, and they just harassed and hit him over and over again. So this is the type of pressure that the Eagles are going to have to bring. Obviously, it's going to need to be uh, not a perfect game plan, but it's going to need to be one where it gets ugly out there and the Eagles take advantage of it. Lloyd Vance joining us on a Tuesday. We'll take you up to two. And again, joining us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline, Rich Canun is here. I think where the Eagles have a puncher's chance here, when you talk about their offense, they have to be very diligent. They're, they should be able to run the ball against uh, the Patriots front seven. And you've got now a surplus of backs, right? Whether it's a Jahi or Clement uh, or, or um, LeGarrette Blunt, the Patriots are giving up close to five yards per carry this season, which was second worst in the NFL. To me, you could take pressure off Foles early on if you can establish the ground game, and I do think they're going to try to pound the rock early on. They they should, because let's face it, the Patriots want to get in a scoring match out there. They they led the NFL in terms of yards on offense, it's 394.2, but on defense, they allow 366 yards per game. So that just shows you that they are comfortable with having these comebacks. And, you know, it, they can score quickly. So I think it's incumbent on the Eagles to control the clock, control yep. the line of scrimmage. And it's up. It's time for a guy to come out there and face his former AFC East rival and run the football on him. I think LeGarrette Blunt going against his former team could be a formidable task. We talked about earlier the recipe that's going to take out the Patriots. Jacksonville had the game plan for three quarters, running the football, Staying aggressive in key situations, throwing the ball down the field, uh, but in the fourth quarter it kind of got lack of lack of So it's going to need to be four quarters 
of consistent effort from offense, defense, and let's not forget special teams. Uh, the Eagles, particularly the kicker, Jake Elliott, he can't afford to miss any PATs or, or he needs to nail all his field goals as well. And I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I also think one of the other matchups to watch when you talk about the Eagles offense is Aguilar against Eric Rowe. I mean, think about this. When when Rowe was with the Eagles in, in Jim Schwartz's first year back in 2016, he basically played strictly on the outside, even when he was the teams. And I remember he was the, quote, third corner back during OTAs and training camp. So he would come on the field, uh, one of the outside corners, move into the slot. He's got great size at 6'1", 205. He can run. He's very fast. But Aguilar, Nelson has played, and I've been very critical of Nelson. He has, you know, take. I think this was a wake-up call. Uh, career year for him, but as long as he can catch it and run his routes, and it's going to open some things up. I mean, that's. I think that's a that's a that's a matchup that I think the Eagles might be able to exploit a little bit because if anything, you get the ground game going, it opens up that RPO, and then if it, if you get that opened up, then you've got Ertz on Patrick Chung, and Ertz is a guy where they love to uh, open up the uh, seam route. So I think that matchup with Aguilar, hence getting the ground game going, can really start to open things up for that offense. You're correct, and they have Malcolm Butler and Stephon Gilmore on the outside. Those guys are doing really well, and I think the Eagles' uh, secondary receivers, whether it's Aguilar or or Smith, one of them has got to make some big plays against a Patriots defense. Let's face it; they have allowed a lot of big plays this season. You go back and look at that pinball machine that they had uh, against the Houston Texans, where Deshaun Watson was throwing the ball all over the place on him. They can be. Uh, move the, the ball on. So they've only had their sack leader this year is Trey Flowers, six and a half. So they kind of spread that around that way. And, and in terms of giveaway takeaways, they're plus six. But, you know, I, I think they, they have not had a lot of takeaways. They only had 18 turnovers that they've taken away this season. So this is a team that can have the ball moved on them. Uh, they're going to try to outsmart you to just make sure they hang around. They're going to punt the football if they need to and play field position. But the Eagles, as you're saying, are going to have to move the ball consistently. And I think they need those explosive plays down the field, 25 yards or more, that we saw like back in week one, the Kansas City Chiefs do to the Patriots. So uh, this is a team that can move, and, and it could be a scoring battle. But then you got to look at the quarterback situation. Do you really want Foles versus Tom Brady in a scoring match? All right. It's a Tuesday, so I kind of have to put you on the spot. Um <laughs> which 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 direction are you leaning here? Well, in looking at the series, the Eagles actually lead the series seven six all time, but the Patriots have won four of the last five times that they played. And the only times that Belichick Brady have lost in the Super Bowl were teams that they had played in the regular season. Obviously, they have not played the Eagles in a regular season. So right now, I have to lean toward the Patriots in this one. I think it will be a close game. Uh, probably I'll, I'll say that the Patriots win 30-24. There'll be a lot of scoring in this game, but uh, maybe I'll be wrong. But I, I know my neighbors and, and friends here in the area are listening. They'll probably get on because I picked the Patriots. <laughs> I don't believe in any of those stats that you're throwing out, by the way. I just like when we talk <laughs> X's and O's. Um, all right, well, listen, uh, we will definitely talk next week. We'll do an extended uh, segment, and uh, we got d- – have to definitely get you in studio as well to kind of recap the season in the game. But uh, always appreciate it, pal. I know you got a ton of writing to do. I know you're going to watch all your film all week. I'm sure you're going to text me on Friday and say, you know what? I think I'm going to change. I'm going to go with the Eagles. <laughs> it, it, it possibly could. It possibly could. All right. Always appreciate all right, it, Lloyd. All right. You got it, Thanks, pal. Man. I appreciate yeah. it. Lloyd Vance, uh, Pro Football Writers Association, also contributor NFL Network, kind enough to join us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline.